Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple gift cards to your friends and family this holiday season. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of T-Moss Boss Show. I'm using this new microphone. Well, it ain't new, but it's a microphone that I've had for some time, but I ain't really like how it sounded at first. But I, I think I'm going to try to get used to it. I'm going I'm to test it out today and see how it overall how it overall works out and things. But um, anyways, hold on. Let me exit out of Facebook because I'm getting notifications and stuff. That's a tad bit distracting. But anyways, what I wanted to talk about. So... The internet personality, uh, B. Simone. Uh, so for those that don't know who B. Simone is, B. Simone is like a uh, comedian. Um, well, I don't know why I said it like that. She is a comedian, but it was. I remember seeing her when she started off on Instagram, and then uh, yeah, she done worked her way up on Wild and Now. She done had her own show. Like the girl's making moves overall, which is good. It's always good to see that with somebody, and. Uh, Recently, actually today, I seen that she was trending on Twitter. This is like the second time like in the past maybe two weeks I've seen her trend on Twitter because of the whole situation regarding the protesting and riots and all that stuff, I guess. So her longtime uh, friend and collaborator, um, Desi Banks, had came out and overall stated how he felt like about the uh, protesting and stuff. And he showed, like, uh, I think I did talk about that, but he showed, like, a two differences of protesting. And one, of course, like, Martin Luther King back in the day and that protesting where people was marching and stuff. And in today's protesting, you got people rioting, looting, setting places on fire, breaking windows and all that. And I had to agree with them on that because that's not protesting. You stealing an ATM machine from wherever store, that's not protesting. You stealing clothes from Nordstrom's, that's not protesting. You doing stuff for your own benefit. You don't care about Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. So everybody, if you get on me for saying that, then oh well, so be it. But I'm just saying, like, how is that overall, you stealing stuff from these stores and things, how is that overall protecting my life? If anything, that's just making my life even worse. Now it's, in a way, I feel like I got an answer for that type of stuff. And to tell y'all the truth, how do I overall, like, you know, what can I say about those people? They're stealing, robbing, setting places on fire. I don't know what to honestly think of them. I don't. But they overall don't care about my life. They care about their life. You stealing some $1,000 shoes and stuff from Nordstrom's. They said Nordstrom's got straight up looted. Straight looted. They said that, that the inside of that store was empty when them people, they finally broke in and stuff. So... Yeah, I'm like, I don't understand how that's overall protesting about, or what, it, what does that have to do with the Black Lives Matter protests and then all the situation regarding George Floyd and all of that? Like, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have, like, if that man was alive today and, um, yeah, he was able to speak for himself, I'm pretty sure he would come out and say, like, the stealing and all that stuff, that's not overall, like, protecting my life. Every Anybody would say that, but... So anyways, uh, yeah, Desi Banks, he came out and said that, was trending on Twitter and was uh, overall like facing a lot of backlash over it. B. Simone came out defending him because that's, that's her friend. Like, that's somebody that she cares about and stuff. So I'll do the same thing. If my friend made some tweet like that, in a heartbeat, I would defend them. I guess if they're going against Black Lives Matter and all of that, then I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know that person. That's, that's on them and things. But if they're overall like... If it's something I can agree on, then yeah, I'm going to um, overall like be with it and stuff. So, But anyways, fast forward to today. So B. Simone, she's trending on Twitter because uh, I guess she was on, uh, I think it was Nick Cannon's uh, podcast or something. And uh, was overall talking about how she doesn't want to date a man with a nine to five job. She wants to date a man with an, um, that's a CEO or entrepreneur or something like that. And it just was really like a slap in the face to like dudes with nine to five jobs that's 
doing nothing but putting in, excuse me, putting in work, trying to provide for their family and all of that. Like, that's just a major slap in the face. It is. And if you were to ask me, like, if I'm a CEO or if I'm an entrepreneur, I'm making bang left and right or everywhere I step into and things, I don't want a woman like B. Simone's. I don't. No disrespect to her, but I would rather I would rather date a woman with a nine to five job and motivate her to climb the ladder for whatever career path that she wants to go in. So if she wants to continue working a nine to five job that is on her. That is completely on her. But I'm still going to follow my dreams. I'm still going to do my thing. But if I was blessed with a woman by my side and she is supportive of my career choices, I feel like the one the one thing that I can do to repay her back is to show the same amount of respect she I like she shows to me for her career choices. So yeah, if she decides to work a 9 to 5 job, that is on her. I am not going to be the one to tell her. If anything, I will motivate her and that's it. If she decides that she wants to stop doing this 9 to 5 job and she wants to do something else, she can do that. My thing is to say, I'm look, overall, if we got each other's back, if we're by each other's side, we're going to be supportive of each other. We're going to be there for each other. If we win in employee of the month or if I'm winning YouTube of, um, YouTuber of the year, whichever. If she's supportive of me, I'm going to be supportive of her. But I will never, whether it, yeah, nine to five or whether I am a CEO of a brand or a business or whatever, I will not be with a woman like B. Simone. I, I can't. And that's one thing that I fear that's one major thing that I fear when I'm like, I then I know the day I make it, I feel like that there's going to be all of these women that overall just want to be with me because of how rich that I am. Because I know I'm going to have some big fancy house. I know I'm going to have fancy cars and all of that. I'm most likely going to have like a crazy amount, like the sneaker collection I have now is going to probably be times 10. You know, like I'm overall, I'm going to like, but I'm still going to be making moves. I'm still going to be doing my thing and stuff. But I just feel like that, I'm going to have all of these nice things and a woman is not going to overall care about my career. She's overall not going to care about all of the things I got going on in my life. She's overall going to care about the money that I have. And that's why I would date a woman that's doing the same exact thing as me, regardless of whoever is making more. Like overall, I don't care about that. I don't. So if a woman, yes, yeah, she comes to me, whether she's a CEO of a business or whether she's a uh, nine to five worker, I don't care. I'm like, are we going to be by each other's side? Are we going to be supportive of each other? Are we not going to do things to hurt each other? That's the only thing. My thing is, is that all I want is a family. That's it. But all of that extra stuff, and that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid like she's not, she overall, yeah, she's going to be doing that. And then it's going to get to a point like when we do decide to have kids, then she's not going to want to be with me. And the only thing that she's overall going to just want is my money. So she's like, oh, okay, I'll just have a kid with him. And then uh, overall, just like going like uh, divorce him or break up with him, whichever. And then just pretty much just take all of the money and child support, ask for a crazy amount. And I'm paying her like $50,000 or something like that a month. Like that's the type of stuff where I'm like, no, don't like, I don't want that type of lifestyle. I don't. That's why I'm like to whoever like my future girlfriend or wife is like it needs to be something where like we overall like yeah we just we come to an agreement where we're if we do this if we do break up or divorce whichever we're not going to do things afterwards to hurt each other. That's like that's what we're we're just we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that to each other. You know if she needs money to provide for our kids. I'm like okay. We're, I'm, all, I'm obviously going to be there for my kids regardless, but I don't want her to be asking for an uh, unreasonable amount. And I'm like, okay, it's all of that money. I need to see. My thing is, I'm like, okay, then I need to see receipts. I need to see that all $50,000. If that's the case, I'm like, I need to see that all $50,000 is going to this kid. And I need to, I'm like, I'm seriously, I'll hire whoever I need to hire and stuff uh, to make sure, like, to check all the, or do it myself, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be with no woman, and overall, she's just only with it, she's only with me because, of, um, what's in my pockets, nah, or what house I have, or what car I have, she overall doesn't care about, a woman like that, I feel like, would definitely cheat on you, she would definitely cheat on you, 
Cause it, it or 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 she'll just pretty much just like straight just hurt you and things, leave you for somebody else that's doing better than you. And that's why I'm like, nah, somebody like that is unfaithful. Seriously. And I that's the thing. I'm like, I don't want to speak bad on B. Simone's, but I'm like, you're speaking bad on everybody that has a nine to five job. Like they can't help it. That's the only thing that they got going on for themselves. Like, and I'm like, okay. My thing is, is that what was you doing at the start of your career? Like, how old is B. Simone? Cause I think she's like what twenty. She was like maybe like twenty five or some twenty six. She's dang. She got canceled uh, eight days ago. Dang. Uh, dang. They ain't got like no. Oh, here we go. So she was born in nineteen ninety. So she's thirty. But when's her birthday? April 1st. Yeah, okay, so she turned 30. So, yeah, you're 30 years old. And what was what was I originally saying? Dang, I ain't sure I forgot. It's like, that's something like, you know, I was expecting, because, I see, I ain't forgot what I was saying, because I searched up her name. I was expecting, like, oh, okay, like, to see the thing right there, her age or whatever, but I'm having to scroll down, look through articles and all these other things. But anyways, um, yeah, that's uh, somebody like that. That's just it's it's on it's gonna be an unfaithful relationship. So I highly encourage anybody out there, um, if you are with a woman like that, like um, yeah, like and oh, like put it to the test. Put it honestly though. Put it to the put it to the test because that's there's this um song uh, by Kanye West called "Wouldn't Leave." It was off of that uh, album. He was like, "I hate being bipolar. I love it" or something like that. I can't remember the exact name of that album and stuff. But he did this song called Wouldn't Leave. And that seriously, that's like one of my favorite songs from Kanye West. My all-time favorite of Kanye is Stronger. I love that song so much. But probably my second favorite would definitely be Wouldn't Leave. And there's a part in the song where he overall... Let me pull up the lyrics. There we go. That seriously is one of the most moving songs to just kind of hear about what was... uh going on and stuff in his path or in his um life i mean the man's doing good for himself so that's good uh so he said my wife calling screaming say we about to lose it all had to calm her down because she couldn't breathe told her she can leave me now but she wouldn't leave that is moving that is so moving because kanye let's let's just talk about kanye for a second this man on top of the world some of the best music that's being released. Got some of the best shoes that's being released. He is on top of the world. But he reached a crashing point. He reached a point where his career had the worst crash ever throughout his whole career. It seriously did. So he's asking Mark um, Zuckerberg, Zoo Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, whatever, tomato, tomato. But he's anyways asking this man for $50 million to invest in him. Mark said no. So Kanye, he's still struggling, still struggling, still got his uh, beautiful million dollar wife standing next to him. She still got her thing going on. She got her clothes, makeup, TV show, all of that. So she's set. Kanye, he seriously, he's good. like he, this man is about to lose everything that he ever worked hard for. And then all of a sudden, this man becomes a billionaire. From his shoes. I have a pair of his shoes too. His shoes are comfortable. I'll be wearing them shoes all the time. But anyways, he becomes a billionaire from his shoes. He becomes this Christian uh, like singer slash rapper. I don't even know what to really call it. But he's anyway, he's releasing this Christian music. Kanye, that's one thing that I have to say about him is that he looks like he is living his best life right now. And that's not even me trying to say some like corny stuff and things because I feel like everybody like, you know, says that I'm like, well, I'm living my best life. I truly, truly, every time when I see a video of that man, he looks like that he is living his best life than like ever. Because like the thing is, I've been following Kanye's career ever since I was younger. Like I said, like one of my favorite songs when Stronger came out, that was like I was I was trying to get that song everywhere. I was trying to download that song off of LimeWire. Like 
that's the thing where I feel like B. Simone just doesn't understand that there are people out here struggling with their nine to fives. The last thing that they need is some like you ain't even trying to motivate them for the good. You're over here trying to make it seem like that. Oh, well, if I stop working my nine to five, I'm a man. I'm a get or if I yeah become a CEO, then I'm gonna get a woman like B. Simone. I'm telling you guys right now, that's that's just it's not the way. It is not the way. But anyways, back on Kanye. Kanye. I've been following his career ever since I was younger, seeing everything that has happened to this man from paparazzi's beef, from him losing his mom, from what else, uh, like his music not doing as well as his other music, like, cause people were straight just trashing on like all his albums, like after like, uh, what was it, 808 and Heartbreaks, cause I know he came out with this like whole like Yeezy like personality and stuff. Then, uh, yeah, people wasn't really feeling that because he did that, um, was it, what was, what was that album again? I need to see the name of it. Oh, I didn't know he produced that song. It overall was good. That was a good song. Ultra Light Beam, that's another favorite song of mine, or yet I like. But, okay, so he came out with that song, uh, so... All right, so let's go. Like, let's look over all his albums. So yeah, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. That album was good. I like that short film that he did with it too. I st I still watch. I still watch that short film till this day because that short film it was good. Um, the music was good. Then he released uh Jesus. That didn't do so high. I mean, it had some bangers. People was overall, they were feeling like some of the music, but people were saying that it was not like his old music. They were not, they was not feeling this new Kanye. Then he came out with something called 2016 uh, Good Fridays. I didn't, didn't, I didn't even know that that was released. Then The Life of Pablo. That was, it received, um, like a lot of people was talking about it and stuff. Like they were overall like, you know, blowing it up and things, but they, um, yeah, it wasn't like as like like I said, it wasn't old Kanye. Then he came out with Yay, and that was like with the like I hate being bipolar, I love it like cover album or something. I mean, I always like forget that that the name the album of that or the name of that album was called Yay. So yeah, then he came out with that, and it kind of like was bringing back you know some. Then he started talking about the release of Yandi that never came out. Then Jesus is King came out, and then also the other, and I felt like that that. Seeing him, like, it might not be old Kanye, but this is a newer version of Kanye that I'm very, very happy to see. I am very, very happy to see that he's just better from how he was, like, a few years ago. Like, I was, like I was saying, like, this man was out here chasing down paparazzis, cussing them out, breaking their cameras, fighting with them, you know, left and right, left and right. And I feel like that that was taking a toll on his career. It was. This man was like, this man was losing out on some serious money. And then didn't Nike drop him from making uh, Yeezy shoes and stuff? So yeah, Nike dropped him. And the, he's not even overall making any money um, off of the uh, Yeezy shoe or off of the Nike Yeezy shoes anymore. So yeah, them shoes is just like, you know, just a lost like lost treasure pretty much like you have a pair of uh, some Yeezys and stuff then it's like yeah you're gonna be spending resale on them you're gonna be spending like five thousand dollars on them shoes and stuff but anyways yeah pretty much you know lost down his deal with Nike and uh then yeah then his like Ye the Adidas Yeezys they wasn't really doing so high so it's and then with his clothing oh my god the clothing remember the clothes when they had holes all in them and stuff so this man was like putting in a lot of work Throughout all this time, he was, like, struggling in things. He was putting in a lot of work. And I guess I can't I can understand, like, you know, where he's coming from. You're doing all this work to still be facing backlash, to still be facing, like, hate and all of this other stuff. And you're out here putting in the most work that you possibly can just for people to just throw it right back in your face. Yeah, that man, I can honestly, then it's like, then you, you lose somebody very important in your life, so you overall can't even go to this person and talk to them and stuff. That will be damaging. I know there's one of my friends where she is like, seriously, the most like supportive person that I've ever met with YouTube. Closest friend of mine. And I'm like, and if something were to happen to her, and she's somebody that I can't even like celebrate with, 
You know, like, I feel like that that would take a toll on me, too. That would be damaging to me, too. And I remember there was at a point in time when I had a dream like that where I did lose her. And that opened up my, 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 like, my eyes so much that I'm like, man, like, it is, like, life is, honestly, it's a scary situation. It is. It, seriously, it is. So to have B. Simone interfere in a person's life and tell them that, oh, I can never be with you because you're not a CEO. You're not an entrepreneur like myself. That is seriously a slap in the face to that person. And you think that that can be the number one thing on their mind where it's like they want to be with a woman like you. But when you have yourself and multiple women telling them that that nine to five worker that's putting in so much work. And he's overall trying to one day be with a woman like you just for you to slap it in his face and say, you're not worthy. You're not enough. That's a slap in the face. That's interfering in a person's life. So my, my thing is to everybody out there, if there is somebody out there interfering in your life, drop them. Straight drop them. And if they're, if they're interfering in your life for the good, of course, have them by your side. But if they're interfering in your life for the bad, and they're overall saying things like that to you and stuff. Like, and I've, I've had, like, maybe not to that extent, but I've had stuff like that said to me where it overall attacked my character. It overall attacked who I was. And I was like, no, I cannot. Like, I, they, I do not see a serious thing happening with this person. And I'm like, no, nah. I'm like, dead people, they want to attack who you are. And I'm like, that's, I can't, no, I'm not with that. I'm not with that at all. So she is going to most likely try to come out with some apology, you know, to take the heat and backlash and all that stuff. Because it was funny, though. I was, um, I was, because so I had watched the video when she was on uh, Nick Cannon's uh, podcast. And so I full screened it. I full screened it. It was like, that was perfect. That was seriously so perfect. But I full screened it. Heard what she said. I'm like, man, this video is stupid. Exited out, and then I see Idris Elba's face when he was sitting. That, like, gift that be going around where he's, like, sitting in the backseat of a car, and he's kind of, like, giving people a side eye. That's the first thing that I see <laughs> once when I exited out of the full screen. Video is no longer there. It's just Idris Elba's face. I'm like, that is amazing. That is fully amazing. But she's, uh... Oh, she's still trending. Dang, she's almost like at 100,000 tweets. So let's just read what some people had to say. So one person said, oh, and they might be agreeing with her. Um, so one person said, B. Simone is right. Entrepreneurs need to date someone who understands why they, why they up at 3 a.m., drop shipping, spend 70K to renovate a con... A, a con Oh, condemned house doing forex, doing forex. I financing a 2014 C class and wearing Louis Vuitton bag, Louis bags with no retirement or health insurance. I I feel like that person's being sarcastic. They they gotta be being. They have to be sarcastic. But then next person, they said I've been seeing this tweet, but they said B Simone is a coon, not funny, and she clowns folks with nine to five jobs. That's three strikes. Get out of here. Another person said, my 9 to 5 got me making 80K straight out of college at 22. So B. Simone can kiss my buttocks, but she used an explicit word. Everybody doesn't want to be an entrepreneur, and there's nothing wrong with that. Facts. Like, straight facts. I'm going to have to, no, I'm going to favorite that tweet. I'm going to favorite that tweet. I did say some things myself, and I'll probably read that afterwards. Um... Then uh, there's, and then that's another thing. When people they be putting entrepreneurs in their bio, and they only be gotten like two followers and stuff. Like anybody, that's and that's when she's all like, "Oh, she only dates CEOs and stuff." I'm like, "Okay, anybody can go and put like, oh, I'm a CEO of my brand or my business. I can say it. I am the CEO of my brand. T Boss Boss TMB. I am a um CEO. Anybody can say that." anybody so that's why i'm like be simone you have to sit down and think about like the things that you say and stuff like come on man but anyways then uh one person so they retweeted the photo or the video and then made their like tweet so they did one of those like quote tweet things and they said why do entrepreneurs think entrepreneurs make money 
the average lifespan of a business in America is not long, especially if it's black owned and or small. If Instagram shuts down tomorrow, B. Simone check is gone. Well, you gotta remember, she is doing wild and out, so that's uh that's how she's making her money and things but i'm like that's the thing i'm like okay yeah you know she ain't gonna be able to do like the instagram stuff and i don't even know if she does youtube things anymore but um yeah i'm like what is wild and now wild and now is somewhat like a um nine to five i don't know what business and things that she got going on behind doors but i mean like really like you can't you, you cannot like this if yeah if i'm like and if it wasn't for all the other stuff that she it was like honestly though no disrespect to be Simone, but if it wasn't for Desi Banks, you would have not had your big break. You wouldn't. You would have not been able, you wouldn't. It was like, because what? You would uh, pretty much like, um, I mean, I, this is how I see like YouTube and videos and all that stuff. It's a 24-7 job. YouTube is a 24-7 job. I'm constantly um, staying up. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, you, know, um, you know, I'm constantly staying up till 3 a.m. recording videos and things. But I'm not I'm not doing this so I could get me a woman like B. Simone. I'm doing this so I could get a family like, uh, um, what's a good family out there? Like Kevin Hart or something, you know, or freaking, so like, I just, I overall want a family. I'm not trying to get a woman that wants a CEO or me, an entrepreneur or something like, no, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. So I'm like, you got to understand, like, you might want that. Be then I'm like, that's honestly, though, that's probably why I should be doing all those like single skits and boyfriends and all that. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm like, you out here, you set your standards way too high for no reason. And where has that gotten you in life? I'm saying, like, you had a good point in time in your life, but, I'm, you know, you might be single for a while. That might just be your thing. It's like you might not date no somebody until you, like, 50, 60 years old, the way that you're carrying on. But anyways, uh, then somebody said, B. Simone is confused. She, um, she's trashing. I'm going to just, like, she, they use an explicit word, but I'll just change it up, but... She trashing on nine to five workers, but three years ago she was living out of her car and was a nine to five worker. Last week she didn't want to protest or donate due to her Christianity, but be on wild and out social media talking about sex and um, sucking eggplants. And I'm like, dang, straight put her on blast with that. Then somebody, they, I favorited that tweet. Shout out to at kiss the cook underscore. Chief wrote um Rocket like that man I seen that and I had to favor it because I was like that was funny it was like but he said me looking at people just now finding out be Simone annoying and things I was like that's that injury self a gift man that's funny but anyways um then reading the um last one somebody was like be Simone really thinks she different because she stay up 3 a.m. ordering off aliexpress while everyone else sleep <laughs> like i don't know like my thing is is that yeah i like um working late i like you know focusing on myself and working late and things but um yeah i'm not doing it to get no woman like b simone and stuff but the tweets that i said so oh i saw i was like wait a minute what, what's this so i made three tweets and i said so all CEOs have a chance. I can literally start a business right now and call myself a CEO. People set their standards too high. Good luck to people like that. May God find what you're looking for. If you throw it away because that person isn't quote unquote qualified, that's on you. Then I said another tweet saying, I don't have no beef with being Simone, but a nine to five worker ain't going to want to ain't gonna want a woman like her they want a woman that understands their struggle and wants to be the motivation in their life if you're worried about my money or my title you ain't more for me hashtag for the streets and then i followed it up by saying at one point she was broke and had to work a nine to five don't forget your roots because if it wasn't for your nine to five where would you be i wanted to be a ceo but i'd rather be with a woman that works a nine to five so i can motivate her from the ground up and overall, like, I felt like what I was saying was facts. I would rather be with a woman that's working a nine to five so I can motivate her from the ground up. And I'm like, okay, you doing this, but maybe you should do this. If she says, no, I want to continue working a nine to five. I'm like, you know what? Regardless of whatever you do, guess who's going to be here by your side supporting you? T must boss and always will be. All right. Always will be. So that's why I'm like, look. Um, to be Simone and to anybody else that's setting their standards too high, too low, whichever, I don't care. If you're setting your standards for this person that you got built up in your head to come into your life and do whatever. And my thing is, it's like, okay, so 
You date this CEO. You date this entrepreneur. What if they're Ike Turner? What if one day you asleep and this man just gets, he just decides, you know what? I'm just going to punch this girl clean across her head for no reason. Now you're in an abusive relationship, but guess what, though? Guess what? He's a CEO of his business. He's an entrepreneur. He's making a million dollars a month. So that's why I'm like, you guys got to sit down and think about these things. Like, if somebody comes, I feel like everybody, they have a reason in being in a person's life. Everybody has a reason for being in a person's life. Whether if they are abusive, then I feel like you need to pull some, what was that movie that Jennifer Lopez was in? Enough. You need to pull some stuff like that, join a fighting class, and kick that man through a glass table. But if there is somebody in your life for the good, and they're trying to motivate you from the ground up, regardless of whether they have a 9 to 5, whether they're a CEO, or whatever. Or find like, I was like looking at my phone real quick, sorry for that pause. But yeah, that's the person that needs to be in your life. And don't push them away because they're not, they don't meet your standards. I've had somebody do that. I had somebody um, at one point in time when I was in high school push me away because I wasn't their ideal guy. And after that, I just stopped talking to that person. I'm like, all right, well move on and now i'm like and so and then and it was funny because you know you go through life thinking like was that person right or was i right you know you leave yourself like questioning the situation right and then so many people was like agreeing with me saying like wow that's messed up that's jacked up that that person did that to you and things so i'm like i know i'm not in the wrong i know and this is based off of life experiences where i never push nobody away in life where I was overall, I'm overall, and that's just my thing. I'm like, I got to be there for everybody. I got to be there and motivate everybody. That's my thing. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's why I'm here on earth. But not to push people away because they don't meet my standards. My eyes, my brain, my heart, my soul, there ain't no standards. We're all the same. If this world was to end right now, if a zombie apocalypse or whatever form of the apocalypse started, guess who's going to be at zero dollars zero followers zero likes zero subscribers zero everything all of us all of us so in reality there ain't no standards but people build up standards in their head for i don't know what reason but in reality there ain't no standards we're all the same we all bleed red we all have the same hearts we all have the same brains we all have the same lungs all of that so i'm not trying to hear no stuff where Oh, I don't meet your standards because I work at a nine to five. You know what? The nine to five job that I had, I loved it. I loved it. But I love my YouTube career more. But if I wasn't doing YouTube, I definitely would have been like working my way up to becoming a supervisor and a manager and working my way up to where I am like uh, like a CEO of like a, or a high position in that job all the way until my final days or until I retire. But... Because that job, it was a dope job. It was. I was surrounded by cool people. I like enjoyed it. It was a good job. But I will not let somebody tell me that I'm not enough because that's my um, choice. That Those are my career choices. And I'm like, like I was saying, like she had a nine to five job too. So don't act like, like I said, don't forget your roots. Don't forget where you came from. Like you, if Nick Cannon, my thing is, is that let's say she says something crazy, right? Let's say she says something highly offensive and highly crazy on social media. And she overall was, uh, yeah, faced so much backlash. So much backlash to where she started losing followers. To where she had to um, um, get fired from Wild and Out. Where do you think she would go? You have to work. You have to do something. If, they, if no, there ain't nobody buying into your products, whatever you selling and things, ain't nobody watching your TV shows, you can't get hired for nowhere, what are you going to do? You're going to go right on jobs.com and you're going to find yourself a 9 to 5. So like I said, don't act like, don't act like things can't get taken away from you and stuff. You need to be grateful for the position that you're in in life. And I'm pretty sure she is. But you need to understand that there's people out there thinking the same way. They, they, that happiness that you share with your passion, they feel that same happiness with their 9 to 5. So that's why I'm like, I'm not hearing that. I know people that work 9 to 5s. And I'm like, all right, like her parents most likely work 9 to 5s. Her brothers and sisters most likely work 9 to 5s. Her cousins, nieces, nephews, whoever. 
but I'm pretty sure she knows somebody that works a nine to five. And for you to disrespect them like that because they don't meet your standards or they're not your ideal guy, I'm not hearing that. I'm not hearing that at all. So, therefore, yeah, I feel like, I honestly feel like she needs to, like, for, uh, that needs to be her next TV show. Instead of trying to find a boyfriend, you need to work a nine to five and get, like, that dosage of legitimate life. Life of if there wasn't YouTube, there wasn't Wild and Out, there wasn't Instagram, you would be working a nine to five. So she should be thankful for all these people that have helped her out in life. But like I said, don't act like that that stuff can't get taken away from you. I talk about my time. I talk about my time with YouTube all the time. I am so grateful for the position I'm in with YouTube. But I will never ever trash on a nine to five worker. If anything, I would try to help them with their nine to five. I would try to help them start a business, start up their company. But I don't want them to be like you like. Yeah, I ain't gonna be no B. Simone overall. So, anyways, um, yeah, I feel like I ain't talked enough about this situation, but yeah, uh, yeah, I just, I was like, I seen that, and I was just like, man, like people, they just, they'll say things and they just think they ain't gonna face no like repercussions behind it and stuff. Like, just understand how quick stuff can get taken away from you, but. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for uh, watching and or listening. If you're viewing this on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you're viewing this on the podcast streaming service, make sure you follow or subscribe, however it's set up. And if you are purchasing tickets from SeatGeek, make sure you use my promo code TMOSBOSS. It will knock $20 off your first purchase. And that being said, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and or listening. And peace.